Watch your six! Hey guys, Major Cade here, and I got some pressing intel for you. But before we begin, I do want to let you know that the Double Tap Show goes live on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Link in the description below. I also post new content to this channel every week, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on to stay up to date when new intel goes live. Now with that out of the way, let's debrief. Napoleon Bonaparte is by far one of the most notorious generals in all of military history, better known for his speed and his ability to overwhelm his enemies. Napoleon developed a strategy where his armies could fight separated for a short amount of time by putting generals that were near identical clones of him in key strategic positions and giving them orders in explicit detail. This was unseen at the time as armies were kept together and concentrated and this allowed Napoleon's Le Grand Armée to move at ludicrous speeds and envelop his opponents with ease, who at the time were both rigid and slow. To Napoleon's enemies, Le Grand Armée seemed to appear out of nowhere and from all sides. In the confusion, his enemies were leveled. The envelopment maneuver is one of the most used tactics in war and is the one that Napoleon used in 1805 against the Austrian Empire at the famous Battle of the Ulm, which was a conflict that lasted six weeks and ended up with the Austrian army of 60,000 soldiers surrendering. And to quote Trevor Dupoy, a colonel of the United States and a military historian, Ulm was not a battle. It was a strategic victory so complete and so overwhelming that the issue was never seriously contested in tactical combat. The envelopment maneuver at heart is just a flank, but when people think of flanking, they tend to think of 90 degree angles. Unlike a simple flank, the envelopment maneuver means to attack the enemy at their weakest point and when they least expect it. Think of the envelopment as grabbing something out of air. It either needs to be slower than you or needs to be still. Now in Call of Duty, enemies are light and can move fairly fast. So this maneuver is going to require some visual illusions. You will need four separate things to come together. The first one is a distraction known as the point, short for point of interest. Next, sound concealment. Third, an extremely aggressive player that we're gonna call the flank. And last, communication. Those are the four pillars that this strategy is built on, but this strategy has three parts to it. The point that pins the enemy, the flank that moves to a position, and the envelopment that seals the enemy in. Let's start off with the point. The point has three jobs. First is to be bait. This entails willingly engaging in a fight that the point cannot win while making it enticing for the opposition to engage. It is extremely important that the point of your team understands that his job is to keep the enemy busy, not to win the engagement, but to absorb and return gunfire. The second job is to conceal movements by using or suppress weapons. This means at all costs, even without having a visual, he should still shoot the enemy's way and keep up suppressive fire. His third job is to feed updated intel on the enemy, aka marking them, giving the flank a clear path to the best position from which to attack. The next part is up to the flank. This part of your team has two jobs. The first is to be extremely aggressive and cover as much ground as fast as possible without the worry of their footsteps being heard because the point should be concealing them with gunshots. The second is to find the best position from which to attack from on the fly. This is gonna be a snap judgment. Once it's made, you need to commit to it and then run it. Before we move on to the third part, another important note is that you have to make the point believable. You sell the illusion by splitting off the least of your forces. Meaning if you're running duos, that's one point and one flanker. Trios, two points, one flanker. In quads, three points, one flanker. This ensures that the enemy is kept at a distance and that they don't overpower the point. If this happens, by the time the flank is into position, they will be met with the same fate. Now, part three, the envelopment. Once the point has successfully paved the way and the flank is in optimal position, 
The flank then relays a sit rep to the point. The sit rep should let the point reload, if needed, before the envelopment starts. Then after a few seconds, both the point and the flank attack in one swift movement. Let's go high compress on this guy real quick. Didn't see me coming. Hmm. It's very important for you to understand that planning and communication are the most important part to this maneuver. And there is no such thing as a half measure. Once your team decides to perform an envelopment and the flank picks their position, that is final because separating is extremely dangerous. But with this tactic, what you lose in control, you will gain in mobility and flexibility. Remember, it's harder to control your forces when separated. But like Napoleon said, separate to live, but you have to unite to fight. All right, so let's break this down in real time. There is an enemy on top of that rooftop. So my teammate is gonna be point and I'm gonna be the flank. My first job is to cover that ground as soon as possible. Meanwhile, my teammate is gonna keep feeding me updated intel. At this point, I turn to pinpoint and for me so I know exactly how far I have to go up. Notice how my team keeps up the suppressive fire until I get into the perfect position. Once I get a clear shot of him, the envelopment starts. No way you could have saw it coming. This is what it looks like in multiplayer. The team is spawning from back there, so it'd be dumb to go up that hill. What I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna try to make my way over to the side. I take out this guy, and I'm again, I'm gonna use my team as a point. Make my way as soon as possible right into their spawn. Getting into the best position at the best time. And again, in one swift movement, they're all leveled. Remember you need to split off the least of your forces. In this case we're playing trios, so it's gonna be two points and one flank. That's gonna be me. Notice how the rest of my team stays in one position, keeping up the suppressive fire and making a clear path for me so I know exactly where to go. A lot of the time the flank is gonna lose visual because the flank's point is to cover that ground without being seen. And that's why you need the point to keep feeding you that updated intel. Let's run that back real quick. Contact. Three things. Notice how I'm rushing. Notice how I lose visual of the target. Notice the position that I'm attacking from. It's crushing the enemy with the least amount of casualties. This is how you take away a team from a power position. They're very, very, very hunkered down in there. We're 100% sure that thing is filled with probably landmines and claymores. So my team is gonna open the door. I'm gonna start hitting that suppressive fire while the rest of my team moves in from the right. The minute I'm done here, catch a quick reload and then finish the envelopment. And catch this dude who was just sitting there and this dude who was laying prone. Let's move on to something a little bit more advanced now, and that's what is considered a reverse envelopment, which instead of you enveloping the team, you push the enemy into the envelopment. Notice how the closest strike is pushing them towards me. They're not expecting for me to be here. This is a perfect example of attacking the enemy where they least expect it, but not the weakest point. I down two guys, send a cluster strike, immediately pull off, and let the circle finish them off. Now we're gonna take a look at an open envelopment. An open envelopment is the only way to counter a flank. And what that means is that your flank has to be wider than the enemy's flank. And that's what happens right here. Let's run that back so you can take a closer look. It's hard to fight a battle from two sides. 
So even though we're playing trios, it's going to be two on two, and that's what you're going to see at the very top. So the third guy tries to flank my team. Meanwhile, the open envelopment lets me flank him, keeping my team focused on the fight at hand. Now, for the opposite of an open envelopment, which is called a close envelopment. This envelopment doesn't bank on attacking the team at the weakest point or when they least expect it, but to sow confusion within the forces by putting one guy strategically so close to the team that they separate. And that's what happens here. As he was busy with my other team, the team is now separated out of fear of being outnumbered. Problem is that that forces him to get on the back pedal. Spoiler alert. I decimate him. Things are not always perfect, but this tactic does allow some room for error because the enemy is being forced to fight on two sides. This allows me to quickly get off the axe, catch a reload, and immediately after re-engage due to the fact that the other half of my team is to the right side of this wall. There is no reversal. This maneuver depends mostly on concealment, but it is inevitable that you will find that rare enemy that knows the flank is coming. If this happens, quickly consolidate your forces and overwhelm him up close. Remain on the outside flank for as long as possible, then purposely get on his line of sight and let them drown in your aggression. <laughs> 